I call the honourable member for Fairfax. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's as old as the scriptures and as clear as night and day. We face on Manus Island a moral dilemma, which tests the very fabric of the nation. That tests whether Australia can survive as a nation. The test is whether a nation lawfully constituted and founded on, by and on the rule of law can survive and remain true to its foundations, whether we can honour the legacy of those that fought in world wars to free those in arbitrary detention and concentration camps, to stop the murder by the guards of inmates in prison in German concentration camps, to stop the murder of those that had been incarcerated without charge or without crime or without hearing. All Australians, other than our Indigenous brothers and sisters, have come from all the lands of the world. What Australian would give, his, give up his or her lot and change their position with those incarcerated on a Manus Island? What Australian would be happy to give up his life at the hands of untrained, unrestrained guards, authorised and paid for by the Australian government and Australian taxpayers? We cannot avoid the fact that a person has been killed while under the care and protection of the Australian government and serious injuries have been inflicted on many people. The difference between what has happened at Manus Island and any other deaths is that this death and other maiming have been done while the deceased was in Australian custody. Nothing, nothing justifies the erosion of Australian respect for human rights and the rights of all of us and the rule of law. As it's been said, an injustice done to one man anywhere is an injustice done to all men everywhere. Australian citizens employed to provide protection ran away when it was clear that they could not stop the murderous activity of the Australian government retained PNG guards and associates at Manus Islands. I have been informed that the person killed ran for his life and was captured, placed on a grate where the captor struck his head in inflicting fatal injuries. He was so badly bashed that his head was not recognisable from those who knew him well. This is not about government policy of stopping the boats. I am not suggesting it is. But it is intolerable that security arrangement cannot be can be contracted out, that security is not in the control of the Australian police, state or federal, or that the army is not deployed to ensure the safety of those who are incarcerated by the actions of the Australian government. And the minister must, not, must do what is ever necessary to remove from Manus active duty all individuals that have been involved in the mayhem at Manus. The minister must ensure the proper protection for all families and individuals under our care. The Australian government must not allow the killing of innocent people placed in its care. Compensation needs to be paid now by the Australian government without delay to the family of the murdered detainee and those who have been severely injured. There is no basis under PNG or international law or Australian law for the activities on Manus Island. Who among us would want to be in Manus Island if the guards were to come for them? History tells us that as it was said in respect to the treatment of de detainees in another place in an earlier time, that first they came for the communists and I did not speak out because I was not a communist, then they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist, and then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I said I did not speak out because I was not a Jew, and then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. We cannot let this incident destroy the values of Australia.